Hi guys and welcome back to Creative Pet Keeping. Today is an unplanned video. I found out that there are evacuation orders for Hurricane Irma in Florida and I thought it would be helpful to go over some uh, of the things, how to pretty much prepare your fish tanks for a storm, for evacuations, for leaving. I'm going to try to make this short to the point. Um, I'm in Chicago so you guys don't have to worry about me but I really want to help anybody that is in the evacuation area so I made this list. Let me move my camera a bit closer. I'm a visual learner so I thought a list would be a little easier to go through. So let's get started. When you are leaving do not feed your fish. You want to prepare for uh, power outages or anything going wrong you don't want any extra waste in your tank do not use vacation feeding blocks do not use automatic feeders fish can go uh, a week to three weeks tops without eating so your fish will be completely fine for a couple days it is in your best interest not to feed them at all also next thing is do a large water change I would recommend 80% if you have very sensitive fish species uh, you could do a little less not to shock them but do the biggest possible if you have a better bowl or a 2.5 gallon tank or less I would do a hundred percent water change so completely clean new water because you don't want your tank you don't want any ammonia any nitrate any nitrite just prepare it to be as clean as possible for your fish while you're gone if you have a filter I would say partially uh, clean it. Don't clean the whole thing entirely because you do, do want to keep some of the beneficial bacteria. If you're using a fil filter cartridge, then I would say uh, if you have a new one, put in a new one. Make sure nothing is blocked or in the way. If you have uh, filter media bags, and they kind of look like this, you can get some extra activated carbon or ammonia remover. That's kind of what this looks like, for example. You could put that in the filter media bag and put that into your filter for uh, to give your tank extra um, carbon if needed. Let's move down a little bit. Um, yeah, I mentioned the activated carbon. You could also add an ammonia remover as well. If you have a saltwater tank, do dump the contents of your protein skimmer and set it to uh, take in less water so it doesn't fill up as quickly in case you're gone, you know, for a week or, you know, hopefully you're not gone for a week. You're hopefully you're, you could come back, you know, in a day or two, but just be prepared for the worst. So get that ready. Now, you can get a generator to help power your equipment. You can get a battery-operated air pump or you can get a battery backup as well. If you are using a battery-operated air pump, be sh keep in mind that some of them don't last very long. I've kind of looked online and some of them seem to last uh, somewhere between maybe 8 to 12 hours. Some can last 24 hours, so keep that in mind. Some uh, are manual, some are automatic, so some uh, air, what's it called, air pumps will turn on automatically when the power goes out. Those are the preferable type, but if you can't find that in a store, uh, you know, then get the battery operated one that's better than nothing. If you have labyrinth uh, breeding fish, breathing fish, so with the labyrinth organs such as gouramis, bettas, uh, you don't have to worry as much because they can breathe at the surface of the water. Let me move my camera over a little bit so you can see a bit better. Okay. Also, down, let's see. Oh, and a bonus. If you are using an air stone and are um, an air pump, and it's bubbling up some air and it's battery powered you can fill up your carbon in a baggie and put that above the the water flow of the bubbles and that will push water through the activated carbon and will actually help remove some of the ammonia in your tank in case the power goes out and you don't have a functioning filter so keep that in mind as sort of a backup the next thing is set your aquarium lights on a timer if possible but that is not really a priority the first couple ones at the top were a priority just now that we're going down it's going into the less priority category uh, lower the heater temperature by a degree or two 
when it comes to uh, oxygen concentrations, the hotter the water is, the less oxygen is in the water. So by lowering the temperature just a little bit, it will help in case you you know you're, you lose complete power. You don't have an air pump. You don't have a filter running. This will help your fish breathe a little better and kind of get by without any power. Uh, if you have an AC and assuming in theory you have power uh, and it, your AC is set to automatically turn on in a, turn on at a specific temperature, I would say have it turn on when your temperature reaches 80 degrees. This will help prevent your house from overheating, but that is, you know, not a priority. In regards to power cords, um, move everything up above the ground, off of the floor. You don't want any... Uh, anything to get shocked from the electricity. If you have betta fish, you can actually take a chance and just unplug everything from your tank. If you completely do a water change, you have betta fish in its tank, it should be completely fine for a few days without a heater and a filter and a light. In case of emergency, they should be able to get by if they have a decent water volume. Let's see, another thing that, uh, Oh yeah, at the bottom that I wrote down are some of the tips and I'm kind of bad at, you know, making sense of everything, which is kind of why I wrote it all down. Keep in mind that loss of power is a pretty big possibility, therefore you have to prioritize and think of the basic necessities that your tank needs. Oxygen in the water is a top priority. Uh, except for labyrinth organ fish, so you so giving powering your air pump would be the most important if you have battery backup plug in your air pump and Also plug in your heat and filtration. Those are also priorities if you're worried about losing temperature uh, in your tank you can wrap your tank in a blanket and duct tape it around this will help keep a stable temperature in your tank so that's always an option and in regards to lighting, lighting is really the least important thing um, and it's not a major concern and it also takes up a lot of power to uh, run aquarium lights. So I would recommend if you're connecting things to a backup battery, don't even connect your aquarium lights. Just sacrifice that. That way your backup battery will last much longer if all it has to power is either just an air pump or an air pump and a filter. So I hope that this basic video helps you out. I didn't want to have it be too long or too complicated. Just wrote this little list. So if you need to, you can pause this video and kind of read over it. I'm sorry it's really sloppy, but I just kind of, I've spoken to Sheila with Life with Pets. She's currently evacuating. Hopefully she will be okay and everything will work out fine. She's preparing her tanks right now. So I thought I should make a video to try to help out anyone else that is in Florida and has to evacuate so you have a little basic list of things you can go through. I hope that you will be safe. Please think of yourself and your family uh, first before your fish. Even though we really love our fish and want to take care of them, your safety comes first. Please be safe. I wish you the best. Our thoughts are with you guys and I hope that this last minute video helps you in any way. I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video.